Hello, welcome to another episode of Talking Sports and Fitness with Zeke. I am Zeke, sometimes known as Mike Zielinski. My guest once again uh, in this episode is Eric Valent. Welcome, Eric. Yeah. Eric is a former Major League ball player, played five years, including with the Phillies. He also, when coming up through the ranks, he played for the Reading Phillies in 2000. And he has been in the scouting organization for the Philadelphia Phillies for a number of years. He's now uh, a regional supervisor. I know you travel a lot. So, Eric, uh, tell us a little bit of the story of being a, a scout. And, uh, you know, first of all, what it encompasses yeah, geographically. I, I was an area scout with the Phillies from 2009 to 2012, and I was in charge of Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and New England states. So my primary job was wa uh, watching all draft-eligible high school seniors, uh, college juniors, college seniors, junior college players, and putting reports in on them and recommending them for the draft. And at the time, the super regional supervisors or national supervisors and our scouting director, if uh, I rated a player a certain, certain level, they of course would come in and see him. And so that's what they would do across the country. So I did that for four years and then I got promoted to regional supervisor in 2013. So I've, been, I've done that for the last three years and now I primarily cover the southeast part of the U.S. and the northeast. I work with four area supervisors and literally what I do is I go see their top players and I try to get as deep as I can on their lists and, and then if I rate them a certain level, our scouting director and our national coordinators will come in and see them. So there's, four, there's three other guys like myself within our organization across the, regionally across the country and what we're doing is just we're comparing players from the different areas and then, when we, and then also see players outside my region. And then as we get close to the draft in June, we meet up in Philadelphia for about a week and we kind of just try to mesh all these names together and put them in the best order we can. Now, how accountable are scouts, or even, even more so a supervisor like yourself, uh, when you identify prospects and the Phillies do take them in the amateur draft? And, and you know, obviously it's a feather in your cap if, yeah. they, if they're successful, if they're not successful. And let's face it, I mean, it's really hard to evaluate players at times and project it. If, if guys don't pan out, I mean, do they come back to you and say, well, what happened? Or um, No, I mean, at the time, it's, it's the best decision at the time. So when we're in the room, everybody's in there, general manager, um, front office personnel, uh, everyone else sees players. We talk about them. It's a group effort, um, you, you know, college over high school, pitch over positional player. I right. mean, in the end, you try to get the best player for each round that you can and the ones that you can sign because at certain points of the draft, you can't sign guys for the amount of money that, of, of what it's going to take. So, um, but as far as accountable, sure, in, in the long run, if you really keep on missing uh, on certain, certain players, maybe you have to adjust your philosophy a little bit just in order to get, get some more players to the big leagues. So when you're looking at a ball player, what are you looking at? What, what are, you know, physically, what are the metrics? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there's ability, there's size, um, you know, maybe potential. What do you look at? Yeah, you know, I know it's different for different positions. Yeah, I think but. definitely baseball ability. Just watching him move around the field, just look if, almost like he looks like a baseball player, whether how he's playing catch, how he's swinging the bat at the plate, how a pitcher's delivery is. Just a kid that it, where it kind of comes easy for him. Uh, a ball player. Yeah, a ball player. Yeah. There's a difference, isn't there, between being athletic and being a ball player? Yes, yes. And even, yeah, because being athletic, some people ought to think, think automatic, oh, he's got to be fast. No, not necessarily. You can be just a quick first step or, yeah, just know what to do around the bag, know how to play the outfield, just certain, just know the game. Uh, as a pitcher, being able to just set up hitters, throw strikes with your secondary stuff or just throw a strike when you really need to. Of course, we're looking at their competitiveness, their mental makeup, which our area scouts definitely are going to have a, a, a better idea of that than myself who's coming in for, to see a guy a lot That's something times. You, we're going to get into, mm -hmm. Google and analytics. Yeah. But that mental toughness is not something you can put in. No, it takes time and it takes experience. And you just sometimes you just never know. I mean, the, the kids are so far away from the major leagues that a lot can happen and they can grow up and go backwards. But that's why it's really important that you get the players with the most ability. You got to get baseball players and then athletic, of course, you know, strength, of course, all that's going to play better than someone that's not as strong or not as athletic. So baseball players with as much tools as you can. And then you kind of just go down the ladder, ladder and Start picking the rest of them. Do you personally prefer high school kids or college kids? Uh, yeah, I think the, well, the best of the best can either be high school or college. Uh, there's, there, of course, there's way more college players that are ready to go out and play than high school, mm -hmm. come to high school. But kids that are mentally ready and physically ready and to come out of high school, they definitely, and that's what they want to do, they should, they should sign out of high school because um, 
they're, they're ready, essentially. They don't need to go to college, but that's, that's not for a lot of them. If, uh, but when they're still in the high school level, you still, it's more potential than the, the guy who's maybe a junior in college is a little bit more of a given commodity. You're, you're seeing what you're going to be seeing. Yeah, essentially, yeah, because we're getting them at 18 rather than 21, so there is a little bit more of a window there. But ideally, we're getting that high school kid. We, want, we don't want him to repeat a level. We want him to get up there and still be a big leaguer at 22 or 23 years old. We don't want him to end up getting there the same time as the college guy. When you're evaluating pitchers, mm -hmm. how much does his uh, mechanic, if you see a pitcher who's a heck of a pitcher, but you, you know that his mechanics are going to cause physical problems, do you steer clear of him or you uh, recommend him a little less? Yeah, I think what we do is we could put up all the names on the board and then of course some guys will get knocked down a little bit for different things. Maybe one guy's competitiveness, one guy's um, just like you said, his mechanics are off or a guy doesn't really play a position that well. So again, definitely have, still have value for major leagues because they have things that are better than someone else, but maybe they get no knocked down just a little bit. You were a grinder. You were uh, an excellent college mm -hmm. player, All-American UCLA, but you were a grinder as a major leaguer. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys who make the best managers historically are not the superstars. It was the grinders. Does that make you a better scout? Uh, and I think the best managers, people really can manage personalities. I mean, you're going to have five to seven coaches on a team. Everyone kind of knows certain tendencies or when you're going to have to take a pitcher out or when to pinch hit. Right. But I think the manager's biggest number one is just to be able to players just to deal with players and players want to play for you. I mean, there's, that you're genuine, that you're honest, that you that you can mm -hmm. keep them motivated. I think that's the main thing. But as far as myself, um, I just think it's being conscientious, um, just knowing that you want to do a good job no matter if someone, someone's watching or they're not. So, and I have passion for what I do, and I think it's just getting as many of those people as you can in your organization or really in any, in any type of business, I think you're going to be better off. All right, now there's been a sea change in Philadelphia. You have a 36-year-old uh, general manager, Matt Klentak, mm -hmm. uh, who's an analytics guy, which is the, all the rage in baseball these days. You're 38 and a young man, but you know, the GM of the Phillies is 36. They've just hired a, uh, a guy from Google mm -hmm. to be, what, director of baseball development. I have the clip here somewhere. But uh, it, it just, it's just, uh, oh yeah, it's just amazing. You know, how does that fit traditional scouting uh, how does that dovetail with analytics? I think it's, I mean, everyone has always looked at stats ever since the beginning of baseball. I mean, I have. I used to, even as a player, I'd look at the stat line. Different of, stats, though. I'm stat, some of these new stats, I, would, I don't yeah, know what they're I talking mean, I would, about. But also, yeah. I would look at a stat line of a pitcher and come yeah. out, I'd look at the walks, hits, strikeouts, and now, but yeah. now there is a whip for that. But I also knew kind of yeah. what, at the time what was good, what, how many hits were per innings pitch or walks was that. But now they just kind of made it easier. and. It's definitely interesting, and it's something that you have to look at. I mean, there's so much information out there, and baseball is such a, such a tough game, and your payrolls are so high, and you're investing so much in order to win at a certain time period that you're, that you're foolish not to take as much information, whether it's analytics, whether it's from scouts, whether it's from um, fr other front, just anybody in general. You get as much information as you can to make the best decision. So I think that's kind of where we're at, and I think it's a, it's a really good thing. Now, uh, as we tape, uh, the off season is just about ending, and you're going to be hitting the road soon. Mm -hmm. Have, has there been any word from the front office that uh, the operational approach from scouts may be adjusted a little bit, and because there is such an emphasis on analytics within the organization now, because the Phillies traditionally weren't that analytically oriented. Yeah, yeah, we, they were definitely weren't. We've definitely added to it. We've always had some analytics in the office, but definitely not to the extent we have now. So we're definitely growing in that area. Um, but as far as philosophy, you know, we had a new scouting director hire last year. Um, I think we took a lot. Uh, we took some high school kids and college kids. But every really, for us, every really, every draft is different. Um, you just really want to take the best players that you feel that you feel the best about and making it. So whether they're high school or college, of course. A lot of college guys make it, but there's also a lot of good high school players out there. And then when you look up and down the major leagues, there's guys that have been the best have been out of high school, they've been out of college, they've been international. So in the end, you just got to get as much information as you can. Of course, look at maybe trends from the past as far as certain people that have made it and try to understand why they, ha why they didn't or maybe why guys have. So hopefully with, you know, with our whole new, almost like R&D department, I think we're going to be able to get an edge come on those type of things. You know, the Phillies obviously in the major league level had some rough seasons after mm -hmm. a phenomenal run. Nothing lasts forever in the uh, major league level. 
but it seems to be an exciting time uh, for the Phillies. A lot of good young players, and mm -hmm. we don't have time to get into that, but a lot of good prospects, mm -hmm. a lot of guys. Looks like they're going to make an impact in Philadelphia uh, through uh, drafts and also through some of the offseason yeah. acquisitions with trades. So things are looking up for the Phillies? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of, we got a lot of young players, and with, the, with comes that, we have a lot of opportunities. So that's, I mean, the, for this window for, in a town like Philly, to be able to, not necessarily have to win right now. We're going to give the, a lot of these young kids opportunity, and some are going to succeed and some aren't. So I think what the biggest thing is we have a, a quite a good number of them, so hopefully uh, a good number of them can make it, and then we can start mixing in some free agent when the time comes. All right. Well, safe travels. Thank uh, you. I know you rack up a lot of frequent flyer miles. <laughs> uh, we used to have a sports editor in town years ago, of Doc Silva, former okay. minor league player forever. And he always called scouts ivory hunters. Okay. Yeah, in fact, he wrote it in a paper. The guy yeah. wasn't a scout, he was an ivory hunter. Yeah. So you're an ivory hunter. There we go. Thanks. So anyway, thank you. Eric Valent, Philadelphia Phillies Regional Supervisor Scout. And uh, for now, this is uh, Zeke saying goodbye. And don't forget to subscribe to the People Chronicles channel on YouTube. These community stories are made possible in part by BCTV, Susie Ray Design, Queen City Family Restaurant, Lamar Advertising, Heidelberg Family Restaurant, Reading Air, Lions and Hole, Peanut Bar, and Kutztown University.